All right. Hi, friends, and probably lots of feds from various different intelligence agencies. Um, I just want to explain that phone call, the context behind it, why I recorded it, because there's a lot of conspiracy theories going around that this is orchestrated by Julian, that all, there's all kinds of stuff, um, and it's not the case. Sandra, hey. hey, you're, you're, you're posting classified information on Twitter. You can't do that. What? That I'm not posting classified information. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, that, that's classified. Yeah, Rick's role was classified. You can't do that. ABC News already reported it. That's where I saw it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but not his role. You you are posting things that are classified that no one knows and has not been reported. That was reported by ABC News. Yeah, yeah, I know what was reported. I see what you're tweeting. What you're tweeting is not what was reported. Someone's going to go to jail. You need to stop this. Yeah, Julian's in jail right now because of this. I don't want to go to jail. Well, I mean, I, I'll delete my tweet only because you're saying that you'll I get in trouble. I don't want to go to jail. Please, I'm begging you. All right, I will delete it. I was just referring to the ABC okay, News report. But, okay, but, like, they look into you. They see that we speak. Like, it, that, that, like that's bad. I mean, I, I the reason. Take the orders from the president. Okay, so you're gonna punish me because he took orders from the president? I like, wasn't punishing you. I was tweeting from an ABC okay. News report. Okay. Remember, I called you I'm about it. You. I'm begging you, please. All right, I will delete the tweets. Thank you. He was taking orders from the president play another call and I'm going to explain how all of this came about and yeah you can take it for what it is I guess and hopefully smart people smarter than me might be able to put some pieces of this together that I haven't been able to um so I guess we'll start so I also have notes because I don't want to mess up any dates or anything because um people will use absolutely anything to discredit this obviously um So on October 30th of 2018, I published an interview with Julian Assange's mom, Christine, and she was calling for a pardon for her son. So at this time, I was in a DM group with a whole bunch of people from the campaign and other journalists, social media influencers, um, and Ambassador Rick Grinnell was in it, and Arthur Schwartz, who works with people like Don Jr., um, Rick Grinnell. Uh, Lee Zeldin, I think. He works with a bunch of people. Well-connected guy. And I've always been friend. I had always been friendly with him to this point. So about a little bit after I published this article, I posted it in the DM group hoping that somebody would see it and maybe they would feel bad or be moved to share it with people who could make a difference. Um, it was pretty innocuous. People share stuff in this group all the time. They share articles. They share ideas. It just didn't seem like a big deal. So I threw it in the group, and about 10 minutes later, I got this insane phone call, and it was Arthur Schwartz, and he was completely erratic, and he was saying that I needed to stop trying, that a deal had already been made to arrest Julian, that they were going to go into the embassy to get him, Um, and he was saying that people, um, that, you know, I was involved with, like, um, the Trump kind of social world and that I worked for pro Trump outlet and all this stuff. And that, um, people would understand that I had been supporting WikiLeaks before I knew that, that Julian was a bad guy. Um, but that they wouldn't be very understanding when it, when all these bad things came out about him, he was saying that Julian got people killed, um, that people were tortured. He brought up my child who I believe was eight at the time, Um, He was talking about somebody who got tortured and he was like, how would you feel if your daughter got tortured? How old's your daughter? You know, how would you feel about this? And I took it as very threatening, the whole thing. He was threatening my reputation. Um, Some of it I perceived as even more sinister than that. And so I I was pretty shaken up by it. And he was, 
he was just repeating that a deal had already been made, that there was nothing I could do, that even Grinnell and um, Don Jr. had supported WikiLeaks before they knew that they got people killed. He claimed that there were photos of people who were killed. And as we saw, the prosecution in the extradition case has said that nobody was killed because of this, at least that they know of. They also, the Pentagon testified during the Manning trial that nobody got killed. And so I brought this up. I was like, but they said nobody was killed. And he was like, well, you know, it was classified and everybody's changed their minds now that they know. And you're going to be a pretty bad guy if you knew that he got American patriots killed and you're still supporting him. He was saying all these crazy things, right? So in January, I went and I visited Julian in the Ecuadorian embassy, and I told him these things. And we used notes, and we used uh, radio um, that had the white noise. Like, it was just tuned to, like, a station that didn't come in so that there would be white noise and muffle our voices because, obviously, the whole place was surveilled. And I was just trying to be like, what, you know why do these people say this? Like, why are they saying that you got people killed? Like, this is crazy. Um, and we were just talking about it. Um, and, you know, that was pretty much that. I said that they told me that they, they were going to go into the embassy. He had told me it wasn't going to be before Christmas, I think. Um, but he didn't give me a real time frame. So that was that. And... Um, Let's see. Um, he passive like, the thing is, during that phone call, he kept, like, warning me. And he kept being like, you know, what are people going to think of you? How's this going to look? They would understand if you stop supporting him now. So I took it as him trying to, um, to get me to stop writing positive stories about WikiLeaks and to stop supporting Julian. Um, and that he was, like, kind of trying to intimidate me out of it and, um kind of imply that I would be in better graces with the people in like the inner circle if I you know stopped um which obviously I didn't do um yeah so there was that I had also said um that you know going into a foreign nation's embassy would be an act of war and he said that um not if they let us and then he kept, he just kept saying a deal had already been made. And I didn't know at this point that Rick Grinnell had made a deal with Ecuador in, in October, the same month this happened. This is October 30th. Um, so I was just like, why does Arthur know this? Like, what's he talking about? You know? And I, I, I just thought it was kind of weird. And I brought it up to Julian. So, um, About two weeks before his arrest, um, WikiLeaks began to sound the alarm that they were going to be kicked out, that the government was getting sick of them. Um, on uh, March 27th, I believe, I visited Julian in the embassy again, but they, the Ecuadorian government locked me in a room and they wouldn't let Julian come in. And they, they said that he couldn't come in unless he went through a full body search and that our meeting had to be in this conference room that was filled with bugs and video cameras and we didn't want to speak in there because he wanted to tell me things privately and he wanted to bring that radio in again to muffle our voices and they wanted to do this full body search they didn't want the radio to come in instead they locked me in a room for almost their entire visit I got to speak to him for eight minutes because they still kicked me out after the allotted two hours um and it was just a nightmare Julian got into a big screaming match with the ambassador he was saying that he was acting as an agent of the U.S. government um, I wrote about it. I, I'll tweet the link to this out again after. But so when I got back, since Arthur had seen the clue and what was going on, somebody to the White House and everything, I messaged him and I was like, "Do you know anything about why they're doing this to me? Because they they've never they had never done this to any visitor of Julian Assange ever before this." Um, so this is on March 29th, and he called me and he told me that. Um, he knew that I had told Assange and that there was a State Department investigation into who leaked me that information. Um, I had told Julian this in person. <laughs> so obviously people had access to, to my visit with him and they were talking about it. Um, he said that, you know, he understood why I did it, but that because I told him that I couldn't be trusted um, and the call ended and I thought that that was that but 
I recorded that call and I'll play that right now also. And then I'll finish the story. Um, so people were saying that the calls were fake. This is just the voice recorder on my computer. It's not anything fancy. I also broke the screen on my computer. Ignore that, please. <laughs> but as you can see, this is not edited. It's just the voice recording app. Hey, what's going on? Um, listen, I told you some things that I told you could not re be repeated to anyone. Yeah. And you repeated them to him. All right. I can't, like, this is Arthur. I can't tell you anything else because I can't trust you. Not, I can't trust, not that I can't trust you, I can't trust you as a person. It's just like, this is too emotional for you, so I can't tell you anything. I mean, uh, I didn't tell him much. I just told him that I, it was going to be Chelsea but, but stuff. I know, but there's like an investigation now into people at state because of that. Because okay, so also, I, I did, Arthur had told me that they weren't going to go after Julian for the DNC stuff or for Vault 7, that it was going to be the Manning release. I forgot to mention that. Um, and I, I did warn, um, I told, well, I didn't warn them. I, I told um, Chelsea that I thought that they might go after her. And I, I told Julian during that meeting, obviously, what I had heard. Um, because it was weird. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. So, like, very good, like, dear, lifelong friends of mine are under a microscope now. So, I can't talk to you about this. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sorry. I only told him the stuff about... Uh, listen, listen I, I totally get it. That's why I'm not mad. Because I, I, you were like, you were doing it. What you did, what you said, whatever it was, like, you did it with a good heart and good intentions. So, like, I'll never blame anyone or, or like, hold something against them, anyone who does something for the right reasons. But I gotta protect my guys. Yeah. I also want to note that his tone changes significantly in later calls, so I am happy that I recorded this, even though he seems nice here. Also, keep in mind, this is less than two weeks before Julian's arrest. I don't want him to pay, you know, a heavy price. If it isn't true, then, then he should be subjected to what he's being subjected to now. But, then, but you know, from the people that I, that I heard this stuff from, it, it, it's like the stuff that I've seen, like, it, it's not, it's not looking good. I don't know, I'm like personally, emotionally invested in it, you know. I, I totally get it, that's the only reason I'm not mad at you. <laughs> and then they, they treated me like a fucking prisoner when I went there, it was insane. Yeah, I know some of that backstory too, but I can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hang in there, kid. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 listen, I, there was... And... Even though I have um, Do Not Disturb on my phone, apparently that does not stop signal calls. So continuing, I'll go back a second so that it isn't chopped up. Oh, I'm sorry. So this is the part oh, you already there heard. Was, I, there was no malintent. I know that. You weren't trying to screw anyone. Don't, like, don't give it a second thought. I'm just, I just don't, like, I, you texted me before and I didn't respond. I just don't want you to think that I was, like, blowing you off or whatever. Like, it's like, I can't say anything. Yeah. Alright, well, at least we got, like, no collision week to celebrate, so. Yeah. Something to be happy about. <laughs> there is that. Um, yeah. I wish that 
I could have celebrated it more, but I was, you know, dealing with all this stuff. Oh, and... uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I was dealing with some other disaster when, when the report came out, so I couldn't even enjoy it. But, uh, anyway, at least we got that shit behind us. Yeah, thank God. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right, I gotta run. I'm over to Treasury, and I'm, I just have that on the Okay. Okay, so there was that call, which was friendly, like normal. Um, it was much different than the October call. And so I was like, all right, whatever. Didn't think much of it at the time. So on April 11th, Julian was arrested. Um, I was really upset, obviously. I again asked Arthur if he knew anything. He responded with, like, a barrage of text messages about how Julian Assange deserves a lethal injection, how both him and Manning should die in prison, um, how I wasn't going to feel bad anymore once all the stuff came out that he knew, which he had told me that they got people killed. And this is not what the U.S. government has said, like, either in the trial or previously during the Manning trial. Um but he just adamantly kept saying, you know, he got people killed, he deserves a lethal injection, all this stuff. Completely different than what he was saying before when he was like, you know, I know it's fine. He didn't hurt people on purpose. Um, and then I had pointed out that, okay, so then I'll just keep going. <laughs> I suck at this. I'm sorry. I hate being on camera, um, as most of you know. Um, so soon after that, ABC News reported that Grinnell had been involved in the deal to arrest Julian back in October when I got the first call from the person who works for Grinnell. Um, so I was, I saw it, it was just a line like way down in this ABC article. Um, and nobody had like really mentioned it. And I was like, well, isn't that some shit? <laughs> because he called me in October and told me all this stuff. And it turns out it was fucking Grinnell, who is in the group chat and who Arthur works for, who made the deal in the first place. So obviously, like, this makes sense now. So I sent a screenshot of the report to Arthur, and I was like, is this how you knew everything that you told me? Um, and he sent me, like, a shrug emoji. And then he sent me another barrage of messages about how Julian deserves the death penalty, how everyone involved with WikiLeaks deserves a death penalty. Um, I noted that the article said that Grinnell only got a verbal agreement that there wouldn't be a death penalty because the UN has been warning that, you know, the U.S. might be doing a bait and switch um, and tell him that he he didn't, um, that he's not going to get the death penalty and then add more charges once they have him here. Um and Arthur sent another shrug emoji and just continued ranting about how Julian deserves a death penalty. So at this point, I'm like boggled why, as to why the German ambassador is even involved in the first place in making a negotiation between Ecuador and the U.S. and the U.K. And so I tweeted it. Um, I, and I, I was like, you know, why is the German ambassador involved in this deal. This doesn't make any sense. Um, they contacted, Grinnell then contacted my employer and asked me to take it down um, and was, you know, being weird about it. And I didn't. I refused to take it down. So fast forward to September 10th, President Trump announced that he was fired. He had fired his national security advisor, uh, John Bolton. I was celebrating bigly, but then Grinnell's name was being floated everywhere to take over the position, um, including by people who claimed that they supported, I mean, people who supported WikiLeaks were like, being like, yeah, this is great. Let's, you know, let's get Grinnell in there. And I was like, what the fuck guys? No. Like, and so I tweeted again that um, Grinnell was involved in Julian Assange's arrest and that like kind of went after my job for tweeting about it, even though it was publicly reported by ABC news. And I just happened to, you know, highlight it a little bit more. Um, so within hours, I get another phone call from Arthur, which is one that you guys have heard this time. He was frantic. He was, you know, ranting and raving about how he, he could go to jail, that I was tweeting classified information. 
Um, and he said that he, that Grinnell was acting on direct orders from President Trump to secure a deal to arrest Assange. Um, now, whether that means that he gave them an IMF loan, which is what a lot of people think, <laughs> or he had just, you know, promised the death penalty would be off the table. I don't know, but I do know that um, after the audio and my timeline leaked to Politico, she reached out to Grinnell, to, I mean, she reached out to the ODNI to um, get a comment, and within minutes, Arthur had already heard about it and was threatening to sue me. She hadn't even reached out to Arthur yet. So obviously he's getting information and it seems to always be correct. Um, so I'm going to play the call again because people are accusing me of doctoring or editing it. And so I'm going to play it straight from my voice recorder. Um, but I just want to also note that people are saying that I cooked up this scheme with Julian but I haven't talked to Julian since he went to prison. I wrote him a letter, but I don't even think he even got it because the prison told me I could include international postage stamps so he could write back. But then I later found out that you can't actually include stamps. So I don't think he even got my letters. Um, and they were just being like, hi, how are you? I hope that you're okay. Just know that we, you know, people out here care about your case and we care about you. Um, it was nothing about Grinnell or Arthur or anything. And this was an unsolicited phone call that I couldn't possibly have orchestrated. The only reason I was recording him is because that phone call in October was threatening. Um, and if you're going to bring up my daughter in the same ten sentence as torture, I'm going to record your calls from then on. Um, so anyway, here's the call again for people who aren't familiar or haven't heard it. <laughs> as you can see, it's just the voice recorder on Windows. It's like the normal thing for people who don't know how to do tech like me. And there's Hello. a pause because I was running into my bedroom and getting, you know, trying to close my door so my daughter wouldn't hear it. News already reported it. That's where I saw it. Yeah, but, yeah, but not his role. You, you are posting things that are classified and no one knows it has not been reported. That was reported by ABC I News. Know, I know what was reported. I see what you're tweeting. What you're tweeting is not what was reported. Someone's going to go to jail. You need to stop this. Yeah, Julian's in jail right now because of I this. I don't want to go to jail. Well, I mean, I, I'll delete my tweet only because you're saying that you'll I get in trouble. Want to go to jail. Please, I'm begging you. All right, I will delete it. I was just referring to the ABC okay, News report. Like, okay, but, like, they look into you, they see that we speak. Like, it, that, that, like that's bad. I mean, I. Uh, the reason. Take the orders from the president. Okay? So you're going to punish me because he took orders from the president? I like, wasn't punishing you. I was tweeting from an ABC okay. News report. Okay. Remember, I called you I'm about it. You. I'm backing you. Please. All right. I will delete the tweets. Thank you. As you can see, the date on there is September 10th. Julian was in prison. I had not talked to him. He called me. All I had done was tweet it out, like, don't make this guy in charge of the NSA because he worked out the deal to arrest Assange. And, you know, I was offended that my friends were supporting him. <laughs> so that's all I did. I could not possibly have orchestrated this. Um, yeah. So I guess that's all.
Um, sorry that the stream got chopped in half. Um, I'm pretty sure that that was on purpose <laughs> because it was somebody who had been threatening me that they were going to release them. Not threatening, but he was saying that they were going to release them, even though I asked them not to. Um, so, yeah. That's all. <laughs>